Good afternoon, everybody, and good evening in, um, of course, um, in uh, UAE region, in Gulf region, in MENA region, everybody that is looking at us. I'm just um, giving you today a good and nice, uh, very interesting information about unusual franchise concepts that we have now on our menu today. Uh, my name is Dr. Edith uh, Steiner. I think everybody got in contact with me last time in November 2020. That was an old year. And this time I have the opportunity to present uh, a nice franchise, unusual, unique franchise brands who are introducing themselves into your region. People Please pay attention to that. And this is uh, the company named Air AirPod, which is, uh, which is coming from Europe. And uh, we're going to have their CEO, Gregor Mulroulet, joining us. And the company called Use Products from Netherlands. We're going to be joining uh, with um, our very good friend of mine, Bas Hofte from Netherlands, who has been uh, in franchising business since 12 to 2012. Uh, so they're going to be presenting you with a couple of details about their system. Please pay attention to it and try to see how your values and your business interests uh, stay in tune with their interests and values because it's very much interested, interesting how then uh, your chemistry goes in line with their chemistry and then you have a very nice opportunity to get yourself a new business um, a life cycle for your future. Um, I'm going to start with a short presentation of myself. Um, I am so Dr. Edith B. Steiner. I'm working mostly in uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, so Central Europe, together with the Adriatic region, so from Slovenia to Albania. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I'm very much into company also Groventas as a CEO on their operational point of view, selling franchises for different uh, franchise companies. And of course, um, having an opportunity to stay in tune with the new trends in franchise and licensing scene on a global level, of course. Um, I've set up more than 70 franchise systems in my 14 year career as a franchise consultant. And mostly in the last years, I'm being specialized in international franchise development of different brands, of course, retail, of course, food and beverages, services, products, uh, and as well licensing systems, since we have lots of startup companies joining on their licensing expansion to international markets in the last, I can say, six to seven years. Um, what else is about me that uh, we are in the moment of interesting evolution and of course when the evolution stripes up into different colors for our development of businesses and business models uh, we can see right now how different companies apply their different uh, uh, ways to stay on track with their development. And of course, lots of companies are going into digital economy uh, development in terms of um, trying to stay on track and avoid the COVID uh, uh, situation turning and going around. And hopefully it will end up soon in the next months or at the end of 2021. That's a short presentation about me. And what I have today is for the people in United Arab Emirates and of course the Middle East and Arab uh, Arabic uh, uh, nations. I'm very holding my thumbs up for the Hope Probe. It's the first uh, of your um, missile entering the Mars orbit today. It's on the 9th of February. I'm very proud to be here with you. And, and I'm sticking my thumbs to you that everything goes well. Um, I've been reading a lot and I think you put a lot of effort and energy into this. So um, I think I may, hopefully I'm not the only one who's cheering you up <laughs> from Europe. I'm looking forward to more news and feed, feedbacks based on that. Um, so we can start with uh, also our presentation since uh, I'm the first, and then I have two speakers who are impatiently waiting to present themselves. Um, let me share my presentation with you. So, since we are in a franchising scene and franchising business, um, I'm going to start with a little bit of entrepreneurship behind the story so I can maybe uh, just lead you through a nice uh, uh, information about entrepreneurship when it comes to high tech. 
uh, nowadays uh, we have like uh, maybe 10 years startups are being very actively involved into European US scenes and are going to Asian markets uh, with their development in terms of uh, small medium enterprises with their products and services. What we have in uh, franchise consultancy and licensing businesses, I've seen a lot of startups coming to us and asking, uh, we would like to develop our business on other international markets with franchising and licensing. And I did a little bit of research. Uh, these companies start usually on very high level of human capital, which is being saturated in one individual. And this individual with the human capital tries to um, see and, and get into um, execution of their idea, what they see in around them at their markets, uh, how some products or services can be a resolution for many individuals in the in their local markets. Uh, we can see how these companies develop uh, high tech as a center trying to join the exploration of their products and services and using the existing knowledge uh, based on products and services and the, the development of these companies is uh, like gravity, which pulls all the actions into their core and trying to explain we need to do that. And this is the way how the, they, they try to influence um, their strategy on, on outside world and pick up the organizational trend transformation of the structure in, into international markets. So what I've seen here is that uh, uh, finding synergies for these companies for existing resolutions and R&D departments and their international fight, uh, I may say also fight on international markets, it's, it's like uh, very common known that some companies break. And I have an opportunity today to present two companies that did not break. They're on their way to success on international markets on their global level of um, uh, developing their franchise stories. Um, and in between, I uh, also saw that, that it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of energy. I'm gonna just say the way it is, not to just go around. Um, and uh, when they come to franchising story, uh, they always have no problems based on their features of the company's lifestyle and the company's uh, uh, philosophy. And of course, the um, uh, values. Uh, usually these companies do not have problems by getting new franchise candidates because committing themselves so much with their energy into their products and services, uh, franchisees uh, on the first meeting, they trust them. Okay, so uh, let me see how I can uh, go into a presentation. So how unusual and unique franchise brands can be. Um, we're going to see here how uh, uh, I'm, I'm explaining also franchising a little bit just to see that everything comes bottom line to um, everything comes uh, bottom line into uh, franchising and describing the know-how. This means uh, um, I wrote it uh, a lot of information that you find yourself uh, practical uh, uh, resulting from experiences and testing by the franchisor, which refers to secret. And this is described over here. Um, secret definition according to European uh, Franchise Federation, and of course we've taken it from the US uh, Franchise Association, secret means that the know-how as a body or in precise configuration as assembly of its components, it's not generally known or easily accessible. So these are the information that franchise companies keep for themselves. So in case a franchise company gives you an NDA to fulfill and sign and send you back, please do that because otherwise you're not going to be a part of the valuable information that this company has to share with you based of course on a non-disclosure agreement and you have to understand that these companies are investing a lot of their human financial capital in order to develop their businesses uh, into the ways how they can charge themselves as a high-tech uh, companies if we go further We can see here that uh, my personal subjective uh, um, uh, identity of uh, unusual franchise and unique fr brands is like um, going into areas of um, shopping or the way companies are selling their product 
that might be a digital platform for selling different products or uh, fashion or textiles or retail. And uh, these companies usually, uh, as we have a franchise business model on unusualness, um, they're trying to resolve uh, common causes that nobody else sees that it is necessary for the society. And these high-tech products are um, uh, um, seen from the couple of individuals in the society. And uh, uh, these individuals try to set them up in order to develop a business model out of them. And um, usually in these areas, we have also life-saving products and services into uh, taken into the economies uh, differences in changing industries all over the world. And due to the crisis we are now in the middle of, or uh, hopefully it's ending soon, uh, you saw as individuals from all over the world how the business uh, on a global level has changed. And uh, you also saw how companies adapted themselves to new normal, as we said, like as we started saying uh, uh, lots of months ago. Um, so the areas, as I, trying to explain is uh, uh, digitalization of the companies that you try to find maybe uniqueness in digitalization of these companies and uh, some of the society's issues that uh, are seen on a local level and you might also see them in all other markets uh, and high-tech products in every area of the individuals um, or society's world into their world daily usual uh, uh, life. Um, life saving, I can tell you there's a lot of changes being done in health uh, industries, a lot of application based on COVID crisis and changing industries from um, uh, uh, um, lifestyles to uh, uh, differences that we are now facing uh, yet. And of course, the, the uh, world is coming much more aware of how we need to change as a, as a Earth species, if I may say so, in order to hold our planet in, in safe hands for our next and following generations. Uh, referring to unusual, um, I'm not saying um, that I'm not, I wouldn't pick up these companies that I'm referring to now in the next slide. Uh, it's just in, in my understanding, I'm not paying attention to retail in terms of fashion and textiles, unless they have like uh, one Japanese company, uh, they're putting the collagen inside the uh, uh, scarves and, and the t-shirts and shirts uh, due to the, uh, the skin stays hydrated, for example, this would be uh, a retail high tech company developing their uh, uh, products and services. Uh, not fast food uh, or street food, because these companies, they're developing new softwares and new applications. Um, but I would need a company that would say we are preparing our food in a, this and that way. It's a completely different and uh, uh, we are trying to uh, uh, see the world in another words when it comes to food or fast food or healthy fast food. And I'm not counting here inside the real estate companies because if you look at their business models, all the models look almost the same and renting cars uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, um, some of the brands that you know, they're renting cars all over the world. Um, I somehow made like a subjectively my decision not to join these uh, um, um, companies into our pool today. What I am trying to say to all the franchise candidates who are reconsidering or trying to think about uh, what kind of a unique, unusual franchise or license brand they would like to buy and see for themselves as a new business opportunity. We have two uh, kinds of uh, uh, franchise candidates. Uh, some of them would like to have a constant, uh, not really uh, um, a big, fast development of the business in terms of uh, traditional. Uh, they would like to buy, of course, um, uh, companies who are having their location. It's not complicated to to, uh, lead them or guide them. You have your employees, you're doing that by yourself. Um, this is the safe way uh, from the franchisees point, uh, franchisees candidates point of view. On the other hand, we have some individuals and I'm meeting them in the last six to eight months on a more like regular basis as a franchise consultant. Uh, they would like to experience something new, something unusual, because I think the people around the world are seeing we have a lot of food and beverages, we have a lot of retail and fashion uh, uh, stores, we have lots of bakeries, but what we would like to have are different and, and maybe some kind of 
businesses in, in terms of franchising who would bring something fresh to the local markets. And both of these ways, like traditionally going to buy the franchise brand or maybe choosing something unusual, unique for yourself, they have pluses and minuses. Because if the brand is traditional, there, there's been there for 20, 25 years, everybody knows it and the franchise candidate will pay a higher franchise initial fee it will take time also to set up, but based on the credibility and brand awareness, there's going to be success on the local market. Uh, buying new and, and unusual franchise brands, um, there's a minus because nobody knows the brand and, and the franchisee on the local market with franchisors, marketing and PR team has to develop that and it might take time. So these are just a short slots how you as, as franchise candidate might reconsider which way to go and how do you see yourself in, in, in next business opportunity? Is it more traditional, more constant, or is it like going into completely something new and trusting that the society sees the benefits of your business? And I believe lots of uh, uh, startup companies have these kind of resolutions uh, already ready and prepared on their menu for their franchise candidates. And next slide, um, um, as I explained, the companies uh, uh, who, this is what I'm trying to say. When you refer to um, a company in franchising that's developing something unusual or unique, please try to consider because there's always a, a feedback coming. Listen, uh, uh, I can develop that by myself and I can uh, uh, see how I can do that on my own on the local market. Uh, this is out of the story. These companies invested a lot of time, energy and, and uh, all the struggles uh, behind the scene. Financial capital, as I mentioned, it is very much important and human capital at the beginning, it's an extraordinary investment into this and will and persistence on the other way is crucial for these companies. Um, when you are as a franchise candidate are thinking about buying a franchise brand or licensing, please do the research and your homework of the local market. Uh, learn and follow the, the, the franchisors' guidelines, recipes, recommendations, everything they would like to know about the local market, and run different versions of PL, even a negative one to have it on a safe side and scenario how you see on what track you need not to be in order to uh, succeed in your franchise opportunity. Uh, uniqueness in franchising um, is, is um, shown. Uh, and please try to see that in their first appearances on the market. Um, it is time and, and, and demanding uh, 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 task for every franchise candidate. Um, um, try to consider yourself for doing a business with a purpose, then you're going to be on the same level with the CEO or the companies uh, uh, of franchisors values. And trust yourself, you need to have trust also from your family. And um, on the other hand, this is important, competitors will follow and competition is always good. Please refer to that in a positive way and not seeing like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And in franchising, it is very much clear that the franchisor is staying on a high basis with you, trying to help you and try to see in you as a new business opportunity and of course, as a business partner. Okay. These are small implications of uh, how as franchise candidates try to understand the uniqueness in franchise uh, brands and in franchise companies, they have their own story and they would really be very much satisfied to find a suitable, nice franchise candidates on local markets all over the world. And this is from my side. So I'm gonna put my, unshare my presentation right now. And um, I'm gonna invite our next uh, person who is going to join us for today's webinar. This is Mr. Uh, Greg Amargolet from company AirPod. Hi, Greg. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm gonna introduce you shortly. Uh, so I'm gonna just, uh, um, uh, please bear with me. So um, I, I met this company um, a couple of months ago and I was inspired by their products. And let me introduce uh, CEO Greg Margolet as an iPod founder and chief executive officer. He has an um, interesting and incredible, strong, successful story with various startups in manufacturing, uh, food, leisure, and fitness. And in 2004, he opened his first company, specialized in sales, sports, nutrition, fitness, and wellness products. 
And uh, after selling his company in 2010, he started a new company. Um, and uh, this company specialized in producing its own brand functional chewing gums. It's an interesting story. Uh, the products were successfully launched and in the uh, Austrian market in Adriatic region, the brand achieved great success. Uh, his, company's, uh, his company covered more than 5% of the domestic gum market. And then thereafter, the story started with an interesting uh, upgrade for, to his entrepreneurship lifestyle. So in 2016, he set up a new standard in the industry with an airport product. He now has a strong vision of presenting a global concept of rest work pods and a new way of spending time in public, privately, and safely. So I was very much inspired by your products, Grega, and I really thought to myself, there's something new happening around here, and I'm very much proud to present you today also to the MENA region, GCC region, Middle East, and of course, UAE market. Uh, Grega, um, thank you for joining us today and, and giving us the opportunity to share some of your valuable experiences in your business uh, trip that you have made now for many years, <laughs> right? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dr. Edith. Uh, it was a, an excellent introduction into uh, what we're doing. And thank you again for inviting me and giving me opportunity to uh, especially speak about uh, our unique product and uh, the franchise model that uh, we are putting together to enter the global market. So thank you again. Very good. So please introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Grega Margolem. Um, I'm the CEO and uh, founder of AirPod Project. And uh, as Edith already told you, I'm going to uh, present you with a unique product and uh, unique franchise model. And um, let me start by sharing the screen. And uh, I'll put the presentation on. All right. Uh, just a second. All right. So um, let me start uh, just uh, telling you a few words about, uh, about our company. So uh, our team is very young. Uh, it's uh, technologically uh, oriented. Um, we have our own uh, research and development department, department in the company. We have our own IT department. Um, and of course, also the manufacturing team. So it's all in-house. We have um, a lot of people that are creating uh, the product and bringing that uh, to the market. Um, what I would like to maybe uh, I mean, there are a few basically milestones that we achieved during the years. Um, the first one is definitely the beginning of development. And when I got the idea and uh, all of that uh, came together in my head. And um, after quite a lot of years, um, actually, actually three years, uh, but in my mind was a lot of years in between. Um, we kind of, uh, finally came to the first uh, functional mock-up, which was presented in 2019. And then just a year later, uh, we introduced uh, the first actual uh, working prototype so that people could actually use it, test it, and so on. So we installed a couple of uh, that units uh, uh, here in, in Slovenia and, and uh, one in Germany. Uh, we have attended a few uh, fairs, uh, you know, and this was then uh, also presented to, let's say, people from the industry. Um, so, but for, let's say, for the future, um, we have, um, we have uh, plans, but due to COVID uh, situation, there were, you know, uh, you know it, it's stopped us a little bit. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, our first commercial installations are expected to be in the second quarter of uh, 2021. Um, what makes us so unique um, to address this, uh, you know, for, 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 for now? So, um, as I already said, you know, we are technologically ahead of uh, any similar solution or product currently presented on the market. Um, we definitely found a way to scale the business without uh, employing many people to manage the business. 
Um, and I will later explain also why, but in this section, um, majority of our patents that are already approved are linked to that, you know, how to manage the business um, and not at the same time employing huge amount of people, you know, we, and this is also one of the, by my belief, uh, critical points when you are trying to sell the franchise, because the financial part needs to be, you know, as good as possible. Um, but on the critical fi factors of uh, our success, and this is, um, this is something I'm very well aware of, um, once we hit commercially, one, once we go to the market, I think the critical part will definitely be the speed. So how fast can we expand um, on different markets? And um, with that in mind, I think that the franchise, mod franchise model enables us to do just that. So this is also one of the major reasons why we decided to go um, and um, put together a fran franchise package. But let me tell you more about um, the product, uh, because of course the product is the key here, um, the key element. Um, so the AirPod as a product, um, was always designed for people and how people can better spend their time in public, privately and safely. And from the beginning, back in 2016, we had six major guidelines in mind. Um, all of them are listed here, but I will touch each and every one just to explain how we designed the product. So, Clean environment is definitely one of the top priorities because especially now in COVID-19 era, um, people are even more aware of that. So we took care and um, implemented, integrated a disinfection system, which is a system that automatically disinfects all the inner surfaces and, uh, and air. Um, linked to that, we have also automated clean and per cleaning process, which is connected to uh, fleet management, more or less software, how we actually schedule the cleaning. Um, in the privacy and security section, we believe that having a soundproof product um, and providing um, a full darkening option um, and all uh, for all transparent surfaces, which is uh, on one side the door, on the other side the glass. Um, this is making you know your work or re relaxation completely private, and you know not to mention if you want to to rest. So basically, privacy, having the privacy in the public place is also was also one of the key uh, factors how we uh, developed the whole product. Um, the remote, con remote control system just enables us to um, manage all the pods from a centralized location. And of course, that will help also us and other partners how to manage the whole business. The comfort is, majority of comfort was linked to um, having an amazing sound, uh, surround sound inside, um, having a luxurious seat, I mean, seat was also basically is also the center of our product. Um, we have Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi inside. We have air condition and uh, many more things. So we really did everything to make sure that you know the user experience is on the highest level of comfort and privacy. Um, we didn't left out entertainment options, uh, but to really qu quickly dis the, describe how we did that, um, each AirPod is equipped with technology that is enabling our users to connect uh, to audio and um, a video system. And that basically just means that, you know, all of people all, or majority of people um, have their own content on their cell phones. So basically with our um, with our um, technology, we just enabled every user to quickly um, connect to everything they need to, ex for example, watch Netflix, listen to music, and so on and so on. Um, for the last, last part, uh, relaxation options, I would mention one, which is, uh, I mean, I use it most of the time. And we have um, included meditation content, 
and that is already um, inside of the pod, already integrated. So people, if they want to relax or meditate in a public place, they can do that by, um, um, you know, entering, reserving our pod and uh, having that time um, in, in, in peace and, and relaxing uh, for, for relaxing time. Um, but how the AirPod really delivers an experience um, unlike anything else, um, I will show you a short video that we um, filmed and that will give you a better idea of uh, how our product actually works, looks like and so on. So please take a look at the following video. And just a second. Seconds. Uh, hopefully, I'm not sure if the video was um, running well. Hopefully, you've seen uh, what the product is all about and that you enjoyed it. But nevertheless, if um, you didn't uh, get all you wanted to, uh, I mean, if, if the video was not, uh, um, didn't run well, uh, we will share this link to, uh, to this video after, after the presentation. Um, so anyway, uh, for the ones um, that you, that you were, uh, if, if you've seen the video, I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, I was imagining how would it be if all of you were uh, sitting inside of the pod and, and, and watching this uh, presentation. Uh, I think that would be quite an experience. Um, so basically, as you can see, uh, just let me go to the next slide. As you can see, we have um, listed quite a lot of product features. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't go into each and every one. Um, I would just like to say that we did everything to ensure uh, that the user have, have, uh, has, you know, as uh, best user experience and premium service as possible. Um, but um, maybe in the question, uh, um, FAQ, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, if you have any questions after the uh, presentation uh, about the features, I would be gladly to uh, speak about that a bit later. Um, so to even further improve um, the whole user experience, um, we have also created uh, a mobile application um, and um, this allows users like effortless and really quick reservation of the pod. Um, it's really a few simple steps that user actually needs to do to be able to start using the pod. And um, by the measurements that we did, you know, it takes more than it takes, takes less than two minutes to actually book the pod. Um, on the business side, uh, we have developed uh, a business dashboard that allows us to manage and control all the airports remotely. And this is one of the key advantages that we have compared to any similar products or businesses worldwide. 
Um, with this platform, you can basically manage and view all reservations. You can do all overview of the pods worldwide. Even, you know, you can see the statuses inside, uh, whether something, um, you know, is turned on or turned off and so on and so on. So basically the whole concept of having um, like a digital twins of the real product on the platform, which you manage. So this is the point of this uh, business dashboard. Uh, and um, of course, I would like to mention also the digital access, which is the QR code, which uh, this is being then uh, passed on to a user once they did the reservation, so they can actually do the check-in or check-out of, of, of the bot. But um, I mean, there are a lot of many tools um, next to this. Um, I wouldn't mention all of that then because I think we don't have the time not right now, but um, in general, all of this uh, enables us and of course the franchisee uh, partners to operate the whole business from actual, actually one place in real time. Um, and uh, if we're talking about uniqueness, I would also, I mean, it's my responsibility to mention that we have developed um, a product that is also an advertising platform. And that can be very beneficial uh, or get generate additional revenue streams for franchisee partner and, and for us. And we did that by simply integrated uh, LCD screen on the outer side of the pod. That is also being managed through the platform so we can actually load on all the content, whether is it picture or video, and we can also manage uh, manage that content. And it's very similar to, let's say, um, digital billboards that you see um, if you if you um, walk in 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 the city. So, in my whole business career, um, as also Dr. Edith uh, pointed out. I've uh, launched quite a few products um, and I brought quite some brands to, let's say, a lot of different markets. But um, for now, uh, my biggest um, project is definitely uh, AirPod project. And there's a reason why. Um, and that's why, th that's because the potential uh, to place the bots all around the cities and around the world is huge. I mean, we can really create a huge network of um, AirPods. And um, to mention all the locations where we can actually place the pods, we have chosen to uh, install them. It's not only those locations, but we believe that these ones are uh, definitely uh, the priority. So to go really quickly through all the locations um, and few data about them, we believe um, airports are definitely number one where we can, uh, by our um, assessment, install up to 1000 units. It's more or less connected to international airports where there's a lot of transit uh, travelers. Um, the second is definitely shopping malls where we can install up to 30,000 units. Um, also co-working spaces uh, with um, more than 10,000 units, uh, hotels, and of course the railway stations. Um, so, you know, all of this, I mean, the number of products or the number of pods that we install definitely requires the users. And uh, what we did is uh, market research that, you know, confirmed that demand that such a unique service is definitely bigger than we expected. Um, and even the frequency of usage um, was above some of our expectations. But I, what I would maybe just point out is what we found out from this research. And um, majority, I mean, there are more, much more questions that we ask those people, uh, but three that I think are um, worth mentioning. And uh, the number one was, would they use the product? Um, the second one was, how frequent would they use it? And on which locations would they use it? Um, of course, there are more, de more details to that, and that is just a summary of what we've asked. 
But if I, I can just, just quickly point out that um, Asia market, Middle East market um, has a very, very high demand for such service. Um, even I was a bit surprised because, you know, in Dubai, um, there is, um, out of all the people that we asked whether they would use the product or not, 92% of all asked people answered that they would use the, they would definitely use the product. Um, to continue with um, how frequent would they use it, I highlighted one section, which was um, we asked if they would use it once or once per week or more for one hour or more. And as you can see here, uh, the, present, the percentages clearly say that, uh, you know, people would um, use this service more than once a week for more, more than one hour. Um, and in the third section, we have listed all the locations that uh, we believe the, the, the pods should be placed. And as you can see, majority of people in seven cities, global, uh, global cities answered that uh, airports are still definitely number one point for this product. Um, number two, railway stations, shopping centers, uh, hotels and co-working spaces are on, um, on, on uh, the fourth place. So what is included um, in the franchise package? Um, basically, we are looking for a franchise partners who see opportunity to employ their own, of course, team and uh, grow their own business, of course. And uh, of course, in return, um, we would provide uh, our partner with all the material, uh, all the know-how, the product and so on, so on. So basically, we would also give them exclusivity rights. Uh, we would give them proven sales process um operation manuals training um ongoing support plus workshops um definitely all the marketing tools which is um maybe a different um i mean a topic where we could discuss that uh for um, a longer time but um basically provide them with all the tools to grow uh to grow their own business so uh, with this slide, I am finishing the presentation. I hope that you liked what you, he what you heard. Um, and in the next section, uh, when there will be uh, questions, I will be gladly to answer. So thank you again for your attention and uh, speak to you later. Thank you, uh, Gregor. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You, you tried to be fast. You would want to tell us even more and more about your product. I completely understand. Oh. Uh, you would have hours and hours uh, to speak and, and maybe it wouldn't be enough, right? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Bas Hofte, please come to the podium on a visual level. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. You've been waiting for your turn, right? Question. <laughs> yes, about but I totally understand it. It was uh, very informative. So uh, thanks for that, Gregor. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, okay, we have um, right now in front of us, Mr. Bastian Hofte. He's the owner and CEO of Hughes Products Franchise. It's a um, formula known for shops that buy and sell new and secondhand products, both on and offline. He started when he was 17. Um, in 2011, he got the chance to become the CEO and owner of the franchise formula. And now he has uh, 45 shops to nearly 60 shops in four different countries. He's very much experienced in franchising to help further expand the use products formula in Netherlands and globally. And he's responsible for the entire process of helping a new franchisee fulfill his dream. That goes from the initial contact to giving the extensive training programs to guiding the franchisees once they're open it. And uh, if I know who would do that better, then it would be definitely you, Bas. So people, you're looking into a franchise um, a CEO who you will get in contact with in case you can uh, contact them on, of course, uh, um, your uh, through the webpage of used products. Bas, please. Thank you very much, Edita. You are uh, way too kind for us. Um, hopefully all you guys can see it. So um, 
Let me see. Yes. Well, thank you again, Edita. Um, as said, I'm uh, Bastian Hofte from Use Products Franchise. Uh, we are uh, based in the Netherlands, but we have also have shops in Belgium, Germany, and Romania. And um, today I would like to tell you something about us, how we started, uh, the road that we took, and um, also what we like to offer our franchisees. Um, and yeah, of course, uh, for now we only have shops in, in Europe, but it would be amazing uh, if we also could expand outside of Europe. So maybe after today, uh, um, one of you guys is interested in that, and otherwise, hopefully, it would be uh, informative anyway, and, and maybe you can learn something from uh, from my um, story today. So here you can see the first shop that we opened in 1997. Uh, this was in Alkmaar. This is a city just above uh, Amsterdam in the Netherlands, and we started it with the vision. Um, back then, there were secondhand shops, but they were all a bit shady. The products that they sold were often dirty or broken, and there was no warranty. And um, for us, it was we had a vision that we could do different. We wanted to create very nice shops where everybody would feel welcome. Um, where we would sell very good products, almost as good as new, with warranty. Um, and that's with that idea in mind, we started uh, back in 1997. And, and that's how we, we created our formula. So what do we exactly do? Well, we buy and we sell from and to the customer. So if you have, for example, a smartphone, you can come to our shop and uh, you can sell it to us. And then five minutes later, you walk outside with cash in your pocket. Um, and we take that smartphone then uh, and we sell it in the in the shop again. So we have a buying and a selling area in our uh, shops. Um, at the same time, we also change products. So if you want the newest iPhone, you can come to our shop uh, with take your old one with you, uh, exchange it, pay a little extra, and you walk out again with, with the newest iPhone. And for us, that's a very good deal because we can earn twice because we just sold an iPhone and we also bought one that we can sell again. So. In short, that's what we do. Um, it's a very wide range of products that we do this for. So it's not just the smartphones that I talked about, but it's other electronic uh, products. It's also tools. It's it's gold and jewelry. Um, here in the Netherlands, bikes, of course. So this is also for every country and region. It can differ uh, a little bit from one another, but um, in in total, we we sell something for everybody. That's what we always say. We have a very wide range of products that we buy and sell. Um, well, here you can see some of our uh, shops. As you can see, they don't look and feel like a secondhand shop. Uh, what we always try to create is that people uh, who come in ask me, uh, is it is it new or is it secondhand? Uh, that's a feeling that we want to uh, that we want to achieve. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, we, we see ourselves a little bit as a 21st century pawn shop. Uh, it is secondhand, or most of the products that we sell are secondhand, but it doesn't look and feel that way. Um, also, what we've noticed is that it's getting more and more trendy to buy and sell secondhand products. Of course, it's very sustainable for the, for the environment, and this is something that's really getting more and more... Uh, um, uh, people start to notice this and, and it's getting more and more important for everybody that, that we do something about the environment at the moment. And what we do uh, is very trendy and hip because of that in the Netherlands, because people realize that they can buy products that are just, uh, just as good as new ones, but also help the environment by doing that. So it's very tra trendy. And at the same time, it's still uh, very safe for the customers because they do buy it in a shop and they do buy it with warranty. So it's, it's a win-win situation for everybody. Um, well, I can explain you what we do, but I think it's better if I just show you a, a short video. Uh, it gives you a better idea um, of who we are and what we do. So there we go. Wij zien dat de klanten tegenwoordig heel normaal vinden om gewoon tweedehands zowel te kopen als te verkopen. Dat taboe is er gewoon helemaal vanaf. Waar we naar streven zijn gewoon hele mooie winkels die niet als tweedehands winkels aanvoelen. Dus waar een consument zich gewoon heel erg prettig bij voelt. Consumenten worden steeds prijsbewuster. Waarom zou ik 800 euro voor een nieuwe smartphone betalen als ik hem ook bij Use Products kan halen? Gewoon met garantie en hele goede kwaliteit voor misschien wel de helft van de prijs. 
used products existed for 20 years in 2017, and there are now more than 50 stores in the Netherlands. There are also stores in Belgium and Spain, and other countries will soon follow. Used Products pays individuals immediate cash for used or new products, and sells these products with warranty. And in particular, smartphones, tools, games and consoles, gold, bikes, tablets, watches, cameras, and so on. More and more consumers are realizing that used products are still worth money. And even more people are becoming aware of their contribution to a green society. Customers also exchange used products more frequently. For example, someone delivers his iPhone and with a small additional payment buys the latest iPhone again at used products. Ik ben franchise manager van Used Products en uh, ik begeleid de ondernemers in het binnen en buitenland. Nou, de voordelen van als franchisenemer, je bent zelf baas. Het leukste aan dit werk is de diversiteit. Uh, dat je een winkel hebt waarbij je eigenlijk dagelijks diverse producten aangeboden krijgt. Het leukste aan mijn werk dat is uh, ja, de collega's bijsturen. En uh, ja, wanneer je daar resultaat van ziet, uh, dat, dat geeft heel veel voldoening. Ja, wij bieden onze ondernemers natuurlijk een goede ondersteuning. Online kassasysteem waarmee ze gewoon heel goed de winkel in de gaten kunnen houden. In dat online kassasysteem kan ik al heel veel dingen zien. Denk dan aan de marges, denk dan aan de producten die zijn ingekocht. Op basis van die informatie maakt het voor mij heel makkelijk om winkelbezoeken in te plannen. Ja, wat heeft de toekomst, online of offline? Wij geloven heel erg in juist de combinatie van die twee. Als je dat mensen zich online oriënteren en dan bijvoorbeeld bij ons in de winkel de producten fysiek nog even komen bekijken voordat ze het aanschaffen. Both in the Netherlands as well as in other countries, used products is looking for commercial candidates who want to continue to roll out the successful concept. As a franchisee, you benefit from our years of experience, full training and guidance, an online cash register system and your own webshop. The optimal combination of a physical and online store. The greatly increased interest in young used products, central purchasing, and more. So, you have a sound financial background? You are entrepreneurial, commercial, representative, and ambitious. Then, with our growing formula, we would like to go forward into the future with you. Okay, I hope all you guys could see that and could um, uh, could hear it properly as well. Uh, it gives a better view, I think, of what we do and who we are. And I would like to go a little bit in depth now of some of the things that you also saw on the video. Um, as, as said there, we have an online POS system that all our entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, so all our franchisees, they get used to it. So um, in this system, you can see daily uh, live uh, what's happening in your business. So you can see the margins, but you can also see the stock, for example. So you can compare uh, uh, your results of last January with January 2020, or, or you, can, um, you can see everything you need to see. And because it is an online system, as you can see here on the next slide as well, um, we can see it as well. So we can help all the franchisees and we can benchmark all the franchisees and we can see what's going on. So we can see um, the turnovers, we can see the margins, we can see how much they buy, how much they sell. And we can help the entrepreneurs tell them to tell them um, if it's good, uh, if the margins can be higher or, or lower. And, and because it's online, we can do this from a distance. So we don't need to be there. So that's some, uh, something that's really interesting, I think. Um, so yeah, in short, the, the back office software that, that we have ensures that both franchisor and franchisees can monitor their business in real time. Um, and, and that's a, a very unique point of what we have, I think. And at the same time, as you could also see in the video, we're not just an offline shop, we also have an online shop. And uh, I think the combination between this is very important. So all our franchisees get their own web shop as well and, and can sell products online. And, because of this, we give the, the customers the chance to either buy online and then a day later it will be, uh, they will receive the product at home. Or because it is secondhand often, they can also look at the, the product if we have it online, then drive to the shop. And then at the shop, they can look at the product and um, yeah, they can see if, if it's really what they want and then they can buy it and then they can home. 
Um, so here you see another example of that. This is uh, uh, um, how the website looks. We can also make this um, for all the countries that we go to. For example, we have this in Romania, of course, in Romanian and, and in Germany, we have it in German. So if somebody would like to start a shop uh, outside of, of um, uh, Europe, then we will also make this for their region, of course. Um, what we also like to offer our franchisees is an extensive training program. We, we have the knowledge and, and the experience of, of 23 years in this business, and we would love to share that with, uh, with the franchisees. Um, we also uh, do this training here in the Netherlands uh, initially. So we, we, we teach you everything you need to know about the business that we have. And then after that, we also train on location. So after you open your shop in your own area, uh, then we come there as well to help you, of course, with uh, with starting up the shop and and helping you with with everything that you need to know and and that you need to do with your uh, with your shop. So in short, what we offer are the uh, the possibility of opening uh, a own store. So that's just one local shop that you can open in your own area. But we also are always looking for master franchisers. Um, and a master franchisor is somebody who uh, gets the license and then he or she can open uh, multiple shops or can find franchisees for their own uh, region. Um, so this is something that's also uh, available. And for us, we can always look uh, what fits the best for your region and, and how we can go on from there. Um, as a master franchisor, uh, you will also then receive the entree fees and the monthly fees that are being paid by the, by the franchisees under your flag. Um, there's quite a quick return on uh, investment. Um, there's, there's low overhead because we have an, an online system uh, and we buy and sell very locally. So we don't have a big distribution channel or, or something like that. No, you can buy directly from and to the customer. So because it is so locally, um, uh, the initial investment is, is relatively low and, and we can expand quite fast. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Uh, and then there are of course additional revenue streams that I will tell a little bit about uh, in the next sheet, but um, just know that we are open for adjustments per country due to the, the specific circumstances. So we can always look at the local area, what fits, fits best for that area. And so in short, uh, it's a very simple implementation in different countries, as I said, because it is so locally. Um, there's a combination between an on and an offline shop. And I think this is in the, in the modern day and age, this is very necessary, uh, especially if we see it now, for example, with the COVID, uh, yeah, it is very important that you also have a good web shop so you can still sell uh, your products. Um, and I think because it is secondhand, this just provides uh, a certain uh, feeling of safety for the customer to buy something from us. Uh, we are a very experienced franchisor. We have been in the business for 23 years now and, and uh, we are operating already in, in several European countries. So we have the experience and we would love to, to share that with you guys. Um, so, the uh, uh, last thing I would like to, to mention is, yeah, there are uh, great opportunities in the current market. Um, we noticed that the second hand is, is getting more and more popular, uh, and especially if the economy doesn't go so well. Well, at the moment, with all the COVID going on, uh, I think most economies don't go so well. So, you see a lot of people falling back to, to secondhand products, and this is something that we can step in. Uh, so, so we expect a, a very busy year for us uh, ahead of us. Um, so yeah, want to earn a, a far above average income while you contribute to a better environment, uh, please let us know. Uh, edit also, uh, Dr. Edit also have uh, our contact information, of course, or you can uh, contact me directly on, on bus at use products, uh, .nl, and um, then we uh, would love to, to give you more information for now. Edita, I think Thank I give you. it back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Bas. We are way over time due to yes. the <laughs> schedule. I'm sorry for that. Okay, please show yourself also. Gregor, uh, would you be so kind and show yourself to us? Um, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, we received some of the questions and uh, I'm going to just um, maybe for Bas, uh, how actually did the online shopping experience uh, 
you the pandemic way? How would you see the trend post the pandemic with online experiences? Uh, very short, very brief, sorry. I'm gonna give it a very short though. Yeah, for us, it's gotten more busy. Um, we, we see that uh, more and more people tr prefer to buy online these days. And, and so for us, it's, it's getting uh, yeah, way more busy than, than it used to be. Very good. Uh, for EarPod, uh, what kind of uh, franchise candidates do you actually look for? at the international uh, local markets? Uh, we are interested in um, various uh, options, uh, like a, mess, a master franchisee, um, but it all depends on um, uh, how we further, um, you know, um, let's say agree to, to a certain... Um, certain local markets interests and exactly yeah uh we, we it's still you know work in progress because uh we have um still some some of the things uh we still need to think some some of the yeah. um, things connected to how we're going to build the whole concept but generally speaking we have a rough idea how we want to handle this how you want to proceed it's also yeah. depending on all the locations that you have based on airports co-working spaces exactly. railway yeah. stations and so on so the feasibility needs to be done remember the slide where i show it to you what's the homework of the franchise candidate what you need to do this is it this is actually applying for the franchise license uh, uh, contacting the franchisor, and after that, following the procedures and recipes, guidelines, recommendations from the franchisor, because always the franchisor has the concept in a franchise package how to sort of start from point number one to your end point signing the franchise agreement. Okay, thank you very much, and I really appreciate, and I'm very happy to have both of you on, on this nice webinar about the new world franchise and unique franchise brands. There are not many opportunities to introduce such um, uh, uh, interesting, attractive and trendy franchises besides all the others that we now right now know and uh, we saw them for the last 30 years. So um, I thank you very much in UAE for the opportunity and also in the Middle East that you were listening to us. In case you really have an interest and you would like to have more information, please contact me or uh, company Earpod. They have a beautiful web page as well as the company Use Product from Netherlands or just contact the team of the franchise local TGFM and you'll get right through us and we'll drive you through the process of recruitment, getting your franchisee license ready for you. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. And it was a pleasure hosting this special webinar about unusualness in franchising. Thank you very much, both of you. Take care. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you for as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.